Greetings everyone, Archimedes here, and welcome back to another Brickfield Lego video. Today, we're going to be taking a look at gears. In particular, we're going to be taking a look at the first three of the four classes of gears. Straight tooth gears, bevel gears, and worm gears. Sound intriguing? Let's get started, shall we? But before we truly start this video, I want you to stand up. I want you to slide back your comfortable chair, step away from your computer or mobile device, and go get yourself some Legos. I want you to grab some gears, some axles, some crossover pins, and some beams. All the while you're watching this video, I want you to test out everything I say. I want you to play with these gears, make sure they work the way I'm telling you they work. That, my friends, is the best way to learn. But before we get any further, let's just take a quick reminder on a little bit of gear terminology. LEGO distinguishes between the different sizes of gears by their tooth number. Thus, this big gear here has 40 teeth, while this little one down here has only 8. We'll use 40 t, 8 t to represent the number of teeth they have on the board. Now, with that in mind, let's really get started, shall we? As we saw in the previous episode, the first class of gears are straight tooth gears. Now, as you notice, every straight tooth gear has spikes, the teeth of the gear, which protrude out straight from the gear, thus a straight tooth gear. Straight tooth gears are designed to pass motion laterally. In other words, this means that if you set straight tooth gears next to one another, they will rotate one another. Pretty simple. Straight tooth gears can only pass motion in on a two-dimensional plane. In other words, although they can pass motion upwards and sideways like this, they can't pass motion at an angle, like this. There are four sizes of straight tooth gears. We have the 40 tooth gear, which is the largest modern Technic gear, the 24 tooth gear, the 16 tooth gear, and the diminutive 8 tooth gear, which is the smallest gear. While 40 tooth, 24 tooth, and 8 tooth straight gears can all be attached to one another in any order in a gear train. 16 tooth gears can only be attached to another 16 tooth gear. As you can see, there just simply is not the right spacing on a beam for a 16 tooth and any of the other size straight tooth gears to mesh. But fear not for the 16 tooth gear. With the introduction of other classes of gears, they suddenly become very important. But before we get to that, let's introduce you to another strange half-breed of a gear. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you the crown gear. At first glance, the 24 tooth crown gear might seem sort of similar to the 24 tooth straight tooth gear. And as it is, they are very similar. In fact, you can place the 24 tooth crown gear in any 40, 24 tooth, or 8 tooth gear trains, and it will spin properly, as seen here. But this gear has another use. As you can see, it has these spikes, teeth, which sprout upwards from the gear, as opposed to shooting outwards, like the original straight tooth gear. If you take a closer look at the subassembly here, you can see what this gear is truly capable of. Crown gear the first member we've looked at that enable you to change the direction of motion. Well, before, with straight tooth gears, you could only have motion in a lateral or two-dimensional plane. Crown gears now introduce a third dimension. As you can see here, while I have motion coming in in this direction, it comes out in this direction. Really neat, huh? The best thing about this gear, however, is that it can work with any other straight tooth gear. So let's take
take a quick look at that, shall we? As you can see here, the crown gear can be attached to any straight tooth gear. As you can see here, I have it attached to a 24 tooth gear. Here, to a 40 tooth gear, and here to an 8 tooth gear. But, why is this useful? Let me just give you a couple examples on how this is useful. Take a look at this car chassis here. Now, if you just had use of straight tooth gears and you wanted to motorize this, it would be very hard to place the motor somewhere very close to the wheel. And if you wanted to have the motor farther up in the model, you'd have to have a very long gear train attaching the motor to this back wheel system. But, if you were simply to place a crown gear here, you'd be able to attach an axle as far back as you like, attach it to the motor, which would make it very easy to motorize this very simple little model and make it run very nicely. Rotating the same frame 90 degrees gives you a simple frame for a helicopter. Are you starting to catch on to how cool this concept is? Well, what if I told you that there were even more ways to do this? Let's take a look at the second class of gears, the bevel gear. Bevel gears are used in the similar context to crown gears. Bevel gears are designed to redirect motion. Now, as you can see here, the bevel gear is pretty similar to the average straight tooth gear. So you can compare the 24 tooth to the 20 tooth bevel gear here. However, while on the straight tooth gear, the spikes straight shoot straight out, on the bevel gear, the teeth are rounded. So they can be attached, they can mesh at all different angles. But why is it important to have all these sizes? since the crown gears seem to work very nicely. Well, the best part of bevel gears is that they can fit in small spaces, like the 12 tooth gear, and they can also make a powerful gear train, so you can gear up and down with them at an angle. So let's just take a look at some fun I've been having with gears, a little model I made, to demonstrate all the various uses of the bevel gear. As we understood from before, bevel gears change motion, they redirect motion, so thus they can be used on both the outside of a beam or on the inside of a beam to redirect motion. However, they can also be used in a normal straight gear train, as seen here or up here. When placing them to redirect motion, any bevel gear can mesh with any other bevel gear. However, when using them in a straight gear train, you cannot place two bevel gears of the same size next to one another in a gear train. As you can see here, they just won't mesh. In short, bevel gears have two purposes. They can be used to redirect motion, or they can be used in gear trains, both of which very useful. Also, bevel gears, as you can see, have different tooth numbers than straight tooth gears. Thus, bevel gears can be used to get different gear ratios, different ratios of power for your models. As you might have seen on my little model, however, there also are half beam width bevel gears. Now, officially, LEGO calls these half beam beam with bevel gears, bevel gears, and they call the double width or the beam width bevel gears, double bevel gears, which makes a lot of sense, right? Well, double bevel gears are a little more versatile in that they can both redirect motion and be used in a gear train. Bevel gears or half beam bevel gears are more are useful when you want to fit something in a small space when you want to redirect motion in a tiny model. Perhaps if you wanted to add some sort of motion in a small part like a shoulder of a robot or a mecha. You should how know, however, that while single bevel gears and double bevel gears will mesh 
indiscriminately, no matter what size they are. Single bevel gear to single bevel gear gear trains. Single bevel gears can only be attached to another single bevel gear of the same size. So thus, you can't place a 20 tooth gear next to a 12 tooth single bevel gear. But before we leave the bevel gears, I must show you this one strange little member called the Technic Knob Wheel. It's not technically a bevel gear, but it shares so many of the properties of a bevel gear that I think it should be. As you can see here, a knob wheel is pretty much a four tooth gear. But let's see it in action, shall we? As you can see in this train here, I have two knob wheels attached to one another. As you can see, they can be used just like any gear in a normal straight gear train. However, these knob wheels can also be used to change motion, just like a bevel gear. The only thing to consider, however, is that these knob wheels, because they have so few teeth, have a tendency to stick, as you can see here in this gear train. So, I suggest you use them with care. But I promised you three of the four classes of gears. So now, may I present to you the worm gear. Now, the worm gear is pretty much a screw, as you can see here. And it has a very particular use. So let's just take a quick look, shall we? When using a worm gear, you have to attach it to another type of gear, such as a straight tooth gear or a bevel gear. It's the only way it can actually be used. As you can see here, when you turn the worm gear, as well as making that really cool forward-moving optical illusion, it also rotates the, any attached gears very slowly. However, if you try to rotate the attached gear, it won't turn the worm gear. This is called an asymmetrical relationship in a gear train. You should know that the worm gear creates a ton of torque, which means it's great if you want to pull or lift a heavy load. This asymmetrical relationship, however, that we discussed just a second ago, makes this even more powerful, however. In a normal gear train, with that heavy load attached to it, the load will slowly pull down on the gear train and will eventually allow the load to pull back to its original position because of its weight. However, with this asymmetrical relationship, the gear is unable to turn the load is unable to shift downwards, and thus, the load is much more stable and secure. Thus, worm de gear design can be very useful in your creations. But before we conclude our discussion on the basic types of gears, I have to talk about one more important piece in gear design. Now, the next two things we're going to talk about are not necessarily gears, however, they transmit motion, and so thus are very important in gear design. We have chains and belts. The whole purpose of chains and belts is to transmit motion over a long distance, much longer than you could feasibly with a gear train. Lego chains are designed to fit neatly within the teeth of Lego gears, of the straight tooth gears. So they can fit in just like this. When you rotate the one gear, the other one turns. Now, the one thing you should know is that the ratio in between the two gears connected by the chain, if they were attached, is the same when they're connected by the chain. So thus here, the ratio would be one to one. While if you take a look at this larger model here, the ratio would be slightly larger. Thus, the same gear ratios apply long distance. Once again, there are numerous uses for this. Belt design requires pulleys instead of gears. Honestly, a pulley can be anything with a groove in it. I have three examples here, including half bushings that we looked at in a previous episode. You simply loop the belt around the races or grooves in the pulleys, 
and rotate them. Voila! Once again, another way to transfer motion. The only thing you have to consider while working with pulleys is that they don't accept a lot of torque or a lot of speed. If this starts spinning too fast, the pulley will start to slide in the groove and it won't have a good grip and the pulley won't go much faster. It's especially bad if you want to use something with a lot of torque because it just simply, after a little bit of pulling, it just simply will not rotate the other pulley. Before we end off this video, I just want to make one very important point, and that is that we've just started taking a look at gears. For example, we haven't even started looking at the fourth class of gears, the rack gear, and we haven't looked at a lot of the specialized gears, like this differential here, which has a whole bunch of gears wrapped inside of it. All these designs are rather advanced, and so thus, we'll leave them for the next Bricks Tips and Tricks episode, where we'll be talking about more complicated ways to use gears. For today, we talked about gears, simple machines that help to transfer motion. We talked about straight tooth gears, which transfer motion on the lateral plane, crown gears, which were the first step into transferring motion cloth at an angle, bevel gears, which continued this transferring motion angled, we especially the two types of bevel gears, both half beam with bevel gears and double bevel gears. We then took a quick look at the Technic knob wheel, a gear of sorts, the worm gear, which creates a lot of torque and had a very interesting asymmetrical relationship we finally ended up with something that isn't quite a gear, but also transfers motion, laterally. Both the chain, and gears, and the belt, and pulleys. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was the first three basic classes of gears, not to mention belts and chains. I hope you liked this video, though. I hope that was interesting or informative, or at least that it entertained you for a couple minutes. If you did in fact like this video, please comment, rate, or subscribe. If you didn't like this video, still, please comment and rate. And if you really want, still, please subscribe too. Point is, I want to hear what you think would make this channel different and better. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I bid you all farewell. My name is Archimedes36, and I'll see you next Sunday.